All right, so now it's time to actually hook in our API view or the endpoint that we created um, to our actual page that's gonna be handling this stuff. So if you think back to how our layouts were, we had that join form here, which is essentially this snippet form, and this is it right here. So we can actually create a JavaScript function that's gonna prevent the standard default as to what this would do and then we will go ahead and use jQuery to actually submit the form and even render any sort of errors that may happen. So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna go back into home and I'm gonna make another block in here. And this is gonna be called block jQuery. So we'll do block jQuery and in block. And in here, I'll just go ahead and write script and script this I'm gonna go ahead and copy and bring into our base.html. I'm gonna bring it underneath the jQuery that was already imported. I'm gonna bring it to the very bottom there. And inside of this, I'll just do dollar sign document dot ready function. And then we'll run our imported jQuery block in here as needed. Okay, so now that we've got that block there, we can go back into our home and we can actually run some stuff for our join form. So I'm just gonna say dot join form dot submit function. Um, and then we'll pass in an E. So for E dot prevent default. And then I'll just do console log this dot serialize. All right, so I'll show you what that means in just a second, but we now need to use this join form class on the actual form itself. So we'll say class equals to join form. Go back here. Okay, so now the, the form should not even submit. Now we have to test this locally. So if I do ABC123, whatever, hit gmail.com and I hit join, nothing happens. So I go to inspect the element here. I go to the console. This is the serialized data. Notice the email is actually in there. When I say serialized data, it means it's data that we can actually send to the back end, which we already had an endpoint. So we say var your, um, let's say join email API endpoint equals to, and we put it into double quotes here. And then I use URL and then the URL name, which in the case for us, we called the URL name email join. So let's go ahead and copy that go back into the home and paste this in here. So now that's our actual endpoint. So all we need to do now is just do dot or dollar sign dot Ajax. And then inside of Ajax, make sure you've got that curly brackets there. We'll do method post data is equal to this dot serialize. URL is equal to join email API endpoint. And then success function and we'll say uh, response or we'll just write data here and I'll just do console log data and then we'll say error and that's also a function also takes in data as an argument and we'll just console log error well we'll say error and console log data again so that's it for Ajax. This is, will actually run the Ajax for us. It sends post data to this URL using the serialized form data. And that's what this is doing. And then we can actually um, get the success. If it actually does submit it, then it will go through. And that's that. Um, after it's successful, we can even just go ahead and say um, the form or this dot fade out. And then we can, well, or we could just change it to being something different uh, in general. So let's just leave it as fade out. We'll refresh in here and I'll say abc at gmail.com. This should give us an error. So let's go ahead and inspect the element here. We go into console. We see that it says error and then it gives us the response text here. This email already exists. Okay, cool. If I change it to something different and I hit join, um, I get a error of default uh, of undefined. It's probably related to this fade out. We'll worry about that in a moment. At gmail.com, I hit join. And sure enough, the object actually comes through. So that's good. Um, now what I can do is actually say, let's go ahead and just do this parent HTML equals to p class 
lead and we'll say success. Thanks for joining. Close off that P tag. There's our now success form and the error. We want to get the response data. So if I hit join again, um, we've got response JSON in here and it'll give us the error that actually happens. But in this case, I'm just going to render out the um, JSON data as it comes in. So I will go J uh, join form and we'll just say join form error and we'll do text equals to data dot response JSON dot email and we'll just do zero. So that should give us that actual, um, uh, the data that's in there with this error. So I just need to add a error block in here for the join form error. And I'm just gonna put that right above here and say span class equals to join form error, close off that span class. And then I'll refresh in here and I'll say abc at gmail, hit join. This email already exists, great. So that's actually showing it. Um, I will add in this being the alert and alert danger and alert dismissible again. And I'll change it from a span to a div and then I'll go back to my base and grab that ability to dismiss it, which I'm not seeing right now. So let's go ahead and just grab it from get bootstrap.com components and alerts and we want the close button here go ahead and copy that and back into the form we will add in that close button there and now this join form error we actually want the message inside of this box so we'll just say um, span class equals to join form error. And then I'll also add in another alert part saying join form alert and display style, display none. Now the reason for this is so I can actually have this being brought in when the error happens. So I'll just come in and say this fade in. There we go. And let's try that again. Refresh, abc at gmail. I hit join, email already exists. I hit exit, join. Um, notice it does exit it out, so it's not necessarily fading it out. So that error is not perfect, but um, at the very least, we have it now working. So if I do something different, I hit join. Um, this email already exists again. And then there we go, success, thanks for joining. Um, so that's like more important as to what, what it is that we're working on there. Okay, so that's it for the jQuery stuff. This is doing some Ajax so we can uh, dynamically load this. Now, notice it's not that big of a deal as far as the code is concerned. But what I want to do is instead of having it directly on this template here, I'm going to go and bring it into the, the base.html and I'm going to add it in as its own script. So script source equals to, or excuse me, script, and we'll close it off in here. And I'm just going to leave it in as that. This URL endpoint, I could do it in a different way, but right now it's based off of uh, Django's URL. So I'm not actually going to change this into an external JavaScript form, but instead just having it there. And I, I'm going to take off the block jQuery there because I don't need it anymore, or at least I don't think I do. So let's go ahead and try and hit join. Oh, whoops, we can't do that there. Hit join. And yeah, so it's now working just fine um, as far as our jQuery is concerned. The reason I also have it on the base.html, so that allows me to then reuse the join form anywhere without necessarily needing the um, actual jQuery to work only on that one page, which is also very important. All right, so if you have any questions on what we did here, let us know, otherwise let's keep going. And before we actually run, let's go ahead and bring this into the data, or the go live, get status, get add dash dash all, get commit, add um, Ajax join form, get push Heroku master. Okay, so it looks like everything deployed fine. Going back on the website, let's take a look. And we got an application error. 
So let's just run, oh, I know why, because I have to do pip freeze requirements.txt, get status, get add, get commit, update requirements, get push Heroku master. Uh, the reason I knew is requirements has everything to do with the fact that I introduced a new, uh, um, the rest framework in that last video. And I actually realized and remembered that I didn't actually update the requirements. And right now it's, it's showing that it's downloading and adding those in. Of course, this application error, it would probably send you, it might send you an email, but you could also check your Heroku logs as it says. Uh, for the details, um, that's just kind of something that you'll have to kind of get used to doing. But anyway, so now that I refresh this, it should actually work. So I'll be able to test this URL thing. So I do ABC at Gmail again. I hit join. This email already exists. Awesome. And then I can just change it. Oops. Let's make sure we just change it to something different. And it says success. Thank you for joining or thanks for joining. Perfect. Um, so that is some Ajax stuff. See you in the next one.